We are here with Dan Weinstein, health transformer extraordinaire. I like saying that. Uh, COO, co-founder of Cohero Health. Great to be here with you. Thanks, Eugene. Great to be here. So let's start the combo by um, learning about Cohero Health. Uh, your moonshot, what's your mission and what are you guys doing? So Cohero Health is disrupting respiratory care with smart connected devices. So respiratory care, asthma and COPD. Uh, chronic diseases that affects millions of people, 50 million. Um, and that's in, just in, in the States. US. Yeah, about right? 300 million globally. Um, they're chronic, there's no real cure, but we have fantastic treatments that when taken appropriately, do work really well. And so patients can really manage their disease. The problem is people are people and they don't take their medication the way they're supposed to. So there's less than 50% adherence to what's called a controller medication. So often a patient is prescribed a controller inhaler. So you've probably seen asthma inhalers. Um, you usually think of them as rescue when somebody can't breathe, they take a rescue puff. Um, but often patients are prescribed a controller medication. So they take it every day. They're supposed to take it every day, no matter how they're feeling, and that prevents exacerbations. Problem is people are not adherent to their controller med. So we are solving that problem in two ways. One, we have a smart device that attaches to an inhaler, and it's like a Fitbit. It tracks if you took it or not. It pairs with our software platform called Breathe Smart, which has an engagement platform, a mobile app that reminds you to take your medication, um, provides you educational content, helps you engage and better manage your disease. We also have a device that's called a mobile spirometer. Um, so we're not only getting people to do what they're supposed to be doing better, we're doing things outside of the clinic that have not ever been uh, available before. So usually you go in once a year to do a lung function test um, and you use a spirometer. Um, it's this, generally it's this big hulking right. kind of scary uh, device. Um, we have, uh, we offer a, portable mobile spirometer. So you're in the real world when you're using it. Exactly. And so you, instead of getting one data point per year, you get one data point per day, per week, per month. Um, and then we enter the thing that you as Heart of Health love so much is the whole big data play is now for the first time ever. We're, we know um, a patient's demographic, how, they're, how and when they're taking their medication, how and when they're responding to their medication. And that has never before been known. And so now doctors are empowered to make decisions based on real world clinical data, real world data driven decisions. Um, patients better understand their disease. They do what they're supposed to do. They stay out of the hospital. Um, there's $80 billion is spent on respiratory patients mm. in the United States. Half of that 40 billion is wasted and is a direct result of lack of medication adherence. So part of it's the in adherence challenge. So keeping patients compliant with their regimen, their treatment plan. The other part, it seems like there's a lot of learning that can happen about maybe what the triggers are for, for certain issues, certain blocks that might have, I don't know, certain dust or yeah. pollen issues or whatever the case may be. Is, are you starting to learn those types of things based off the data? Yeah, exactly. So that is a, a perfect point of something that was never really truly understood, um, but that can now be understood with the advent of mobile devices and people living with computers in their pocket. So we just released um, a feature where patients can record symptoms and triggers. So many asthmatic patients have different types of triggers. It's it, they're weird. Some of them are like laughing, hmm. um, pollen, dust, uh, animals. Yeah, like weird, there's weird stuff that triggers people's um, exacerbations. And so now we'll, we can collect those things via the app. Patients can better understand their own triggers so they can be prepared. Like, hey, when I go to mom's house that has uh, all the cats, like I really need to make sure I have my medication, things like that. Their doctors now start better understanding what's going on with the patients, but then ultimately we know you have that big data play and you can understand, all right, if a patient who's 25 years old, um, female from this region, if they their biggest triggers are uh, cat pollen and cockroaches, they seem to do the best on X medication and X treatment regimen. So taking this medication at this certain time, these are the things we're, we're learning with, with the ReSmart platform and can then personalize. It's all about personalization. So in the future, when somebody's newly diagnosed, we look at the Cohero dashboard and we say, all right, you fit this demographic. People like you have done best on treatment therapy X. 
this is what we're going to prescribe. And so ultimately, it's all about better care uh, at a reduced cost. So it sounds like a very important component is the individualized understanding of what this can do. But is there also a population component to this where you can start to learn across maybe a zip code or a city block or a region um, or other types of demographic information um, where you can start to use that data in a way that becomes meaningful to the patients or providers that are yeah. working with them? Yeah, I mean, the beauty of it is it's it gets down to an individual level, but also up at a population level. and so. People who are responsible for populations, this is now a tool to better manage those populations. So if you think about a large health system that has thousands of respiratory patients, we have tools and dashboards for you to very quickly look and see who in my population is doing okay, who in my population needs intervention. Um, and it's really key with platforms like this to make it easy to digest. Um, so that providers, their flow isn't super disrupted. So they can very quickly look and see, all right, who do I need to respond to? Um, we offer tools to respond and to intervene en masse. So you can look and say, all right, of my 10,000 patients, these 30 overused their rescue medication yesterday. That's something I want to remind them with a certain message. You can have automated messages that look for those criteria and can message those patients. Mm. Or you could, you could show on a dashboard to a provider or to uh, somebody who would want to intervene. Um, and they can then intervene. And then uh, the data also plays at a population level. And mm. it, that's really interesting for, um, for payers to understand kind of the best way to care for different populations. Um, it's also interesting, we also sell to pharmaceutical companies. Um, I was going to ask, who are your yeah, main yeah, customers yeah. so people understand that? Sure, yeah. So we, we sell, I mean, the, the beauty of the platform is everybody benefits. Um, patients are healthier. People who care about those patients are better informed about what's going on with them. Providers, for the first time ever, have data to drive their decisions. Insurance companies get better outcomes for their patients at a lower cost. Um, and pharma companies sell kind of the appropriate amount of their product because when there's less adherence, uh, they're selling less than they should. So we sell primarily to through the channels through pharmaceutical companies, through healthcare providers um, with large integrated networks, um, and then insurance. Um, and so would insurance. a patient ask their doctor about this? That's right, yeah. So right now it's a B2B model, um, although we're toying with uh, how best to go B to C because we just get so much tremendous interest from patients who see this and they want it. Those are our, our core business channels. And talk about the journey to validate your solution and, and really prove the efficacy of, of what you're doing. What was that like? Yeah, so that's key. That's like for any platform, any digital health platform, especially disease management, in order to sell it, you need to convince people that it works and these, you know, you need to show real clinical evidence. And that it's um, safe. And that it's safe and effective. Um, so we, we were born, so my co-founder and I both met at Mount Sinai, um, where we have done clinical studies and we have ongoing clinical studies um, to demonstrate that the platform does what we say it does, that it improves adherence and re uh, reduces exacerbations. So uh, that's really part of the DNA of, of how you were born. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And that's a core strength of Melissa's, especially in Cohero Health. And it's key. So when uh, like other startup health companies that are thinking about how to succeed, this is a strength that, that you just need to have. You really need to understand it because it can be really expensive mm -hmm. to do. So you want to make sure you're doing it right so that you have the endpoints that you need. Because when you want to sell to like a health system, because uh, especially if you're cost savings, so a lot of our value is cost savings, which is a harder sell than revenue generation. Right. So when you go to a health system and you are telling them you're going to save them costs, you have to prove it. Um, so the data is really important. Um, and so it, we continue to do it. So we have multiple studies going on right now um, at Yale, at Northwell Health, um, a few other institutions just to continue to validate um, in different populations and different use cases. This is just key. What are your biggest lessons learned as, as an entrepreneur? Um, a few things. So one, healthcare is hard, right? There's, it's uh, the beauty of uh, where we are right now is there's a lot of things broken in healthcare. Um, but the challenge is healthcare is really slow and it's really challenging. So um, lessons learned. It's really weird being a tech company in healthcare because you're really quick and nimble on one hand, but your customers 
can take two years to make decisions. And so it's really challenging to balance those two things. Um, it's also really important to understand the customers and understand why they're slow and kind of what their reservations are and to make mm -hmm. sure you can address them. It's also the healthcare is regulated and there's a lot of like a lot of uh, things you might not have expected to have to do, um, especially for software um, as regulations become more and more clear and different apps become medical devices. Right. That, that's like a, a really interesting challenge um, to be considered to again stay how do you stay a nimble lean startup doing agile development but yet documenting just about every decision you make um, to make sure it, it, it's safe and it meets kind of your company goals one of the things we focus on is with all of startup health companies is this health transformer mindset and the first mindset is about having a long-term commitment and i think you hit the nail on the head if you don't have that sort of long view perspective as well as the persistence to sort of navigate the, the long sales cycles, the validation process, uh, it becomes very hard to succeed, if not impossible, yeah. to be successful in this, in this sector. I totally agree. I, I think it plays in entrepreneurship in general, but especially in healthcare. Like people, if you're getting into entrepreneurship, you need to believe in your mission and if you th treat it like a, like it's a lottery ticket, I meet people who, when their startup seems to be successful, they are you're envisioning cash and selling out and all that stuff. And I, whenever I meet those people, I'm certain that they're going to fail because right. that, like you, that's not why you need to be in this. You have to have the long view. You have to be dedicated. All you're doing when you sign up to be an entrepreneur is sign up to work your ass off, right. uh, with zero guaranteed reward, um, other than an awesome experience. Um, so. So what does the future look like? Um, talk to us about your dream at, at Cohero and, and what the next few years looks like when hopefully millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people uh, are using these smart devices. Yeah, I mean, the long-term goal, the long-term dream is just that. Every patient who's diagnosed with respiratory disease gets a platform, uh, the Cohero Health platform to help them have the best outcomes possible. Um, so that's, you know, that will take time. Um, the near term is we, we closed our Series A a few months ago. We're now scaling commercially. So we, Congratulations. Thank and I, you. I met Thanks. your uh, your team is growing. Yeah. Amazing new CEO yeah. who is awesome. So. Yeah, agreed. Mel and I have been in this for a few years. Basically, the first phase is build something, validate it, prove that this thing really could work. Next phase is prove the business model, get a few deployments, show that you know, customers like it. It, it. it gets them an ROI that we can like. That we're a viable business model. So we were past that. Now it's just go full guns blazing and build, you know, a true infrastructure to sell to large health systems, lots of lots of different customers, and then support them. So if you have hundreds of thousands of, of, of patients, which we expect to have in the near future, that's you know, it's a real enterprise. And so that's we just hired Joe Pandorso as our CEO and that's he has terrific experience scaling and building companies like this. So the next the next two years really are gonna be focused on um, scaling, selling a lot of these things, getting health systems set up with them, um, and then continuing to build the the this this the case for it, collecting the data um, from these new deployments and then starting with the big data, starting to, to understand what's going on with all these patients and improving the way we treat respiratory patients. Well, thank you for everything that you all do. It's a very important mission and it's uh, inspiring to get to collaborate and work with you. So thank you. Agreed. Thanks. Mm -hmm.